In Seattle Hospital, Luna, a dedicated surgeon and mother of an eight-year-old, finds herself constantly on call and overbooked. Despite her demanding schedule, Luna manages her job well, diligently checking on her patients. One day, a patient kindly invites her for dessert, but Luna declines, explaining that she has a dinner planned with her son and doesn't want to mess it up. However, as fate would have it, her plans might get disrupted. Luna's on-call duties call her in for an appendectomy, causing her to arrive late for her dinner engagement. Upon reaching home, Luna discovers that the babysitter, Ruth, is calmly crocheting and informs her that Andy, her son, is already asleep. Aware that she'll be returning home late once again, Luna leaves some food for Ruth and advises her to get enough sleep. She proceeds to check on her son, finding him sleeping peacefully like an angel. Luna gently closes the door to his room and switches off the lights, before finally taking a moment for herself. She prepares a cup of something soothing to help her unwind. At that moment, her mother enters the room, and Luna eagerly shares all the events of her hectic day, including the missed dinner. Luna's mother listens attentively, and suggests that Luna take a break and go on vacation. Luna hesitates, acknowledging her heavy workload as a doctor. However, her mother insists that she's not the only surgeon in town, and warns her about the dangers of burning out if she doesn't take a break. Despite her mother's advice, Luna remains unsure if Andy would even enjoy a vacation. Lost in her thoughts and preoccupied with her busy schedule, Luna fails to notice her dinner burning inside the oven. As autumn sets in, Luna finds herself caught up in the morning rush, preparing herself and her son, Andy, for school. A flyer for an upcoming autumn festival catches her eye, but Andy hadn't mentioned it to Luna, since she's always busy. When Luna expresses her desire to attend the festival, Andy reassures her that he understands, and that it's not a big deal. However, Luna can't help but feel a pang of guilt, sensing that she might be missing out on important moments in her son's life. At the hospital, Luna embarks on her rounds once again. She inquires about a patient for whom she recently performed a kidney stone removal, but frustratingly, she can't recall the specific details. Curious about her inability to remember patients, she approaches her secretary for an explanation. The secretary reminds Luna that as a general surgeon, it isn't her responsibility to remember individual patients' cases. That duty falls upon the secretary, who maintains the records. Luna yearns to establish a connection with her patients, but is reminded that time is a luxury she currently lacks. Despite her longing for a personal life outside the hospital, Luna reluctantly agrees to another busy schedule, realizing that nobody else can perform the necessary tasks. Determined to make a change, she approaches Marcy, a diligent secretary, and asks her to clear her schedule during the school break. Though challenging, Marcy promises to make it work so that Luna can have a much-needed break with Andy. With the family farm in mind, Luna finally decides on their destination. As Luna packs her belongings with Andy for their trip back to the farm, Andy expresses a desire to go to sunny places, like Florida or Hawaii. However, he emphasizes that spending time with his mother, especially during harvest time, is what truly matters to him. During their journey, Andy enjoys the scenic views, particularly the pine trees that dominate the landscape in the town they're passing through, appropriately named Pineview. However, they soon find themselves lost, endlessly circling without finding their way. On a bridge, they encounter another vehicle, and both parties must negotiate who should yield and give way. Luna, worried about her son's safety, argues against reversing, since she doesn't want to risk a flat tire or any other mishaps. Eventually, the other driver concedes, but as he starts to reverse, an iron bar pierces through his own tire, resulting in a flat. Feeling remorseful, Luna offers a ride, but the man declines, insisting that everything is alright. They finally arrive at the farm, which is adorned with autumn and Halloween decorations. Andy is thrilled, and comments on the size of the house, asking if he has been there before. Luna explains that he visited with his father when he was very young, having Thanksgiving celebrations with his grandparents and great-grandparents. However, Andy doesn't recall those moments. Luna fondly shares more happy memories from her own childhood when she was around Andy's age. As they enter the house, Luna instructs Andy to head upstairs and check out her old room. Andy hesitates, thinking it might be a girl's room, but Luna assures him that it has shed its feminine character over the years. Luna takes a moment to peruse the photographs, arranging the bed in her old room with a sense of joy and nostalgia. They proceed to the orchard, and unexpectedly come across the man they encountered earlier. Luna realizes that they don't actually know each other. Sensing something amiss, Luna instructs her son to call the sheriff and report the man as a fruit thief. However, it turns out that the man is simply picking pears as part of his work on the farm. Luna immediately feels apologetic for her mistake, and offers to compensate for the flat tire she inadvertently caused by refusing to yield. The man, named Will Nash, reassures her that it's not necessary, stating that as long as she has learned the rules of the road, everything is fine. Luna acknowledges her understanding, grateful for the lesson. Will introduces himself as the farm manager, and reveals that Luna's family already knows him, although her mother failed to inform her of their acquaintance. Coincidentally, the sheriff arrives due to the report made by Luna's son. Once it is clarified that Will is not a pear thief, the sheriff departs. Will kindly gives Andy a pear, which he enjoys, 
and they part ways on friendly terms, with a sense of blissfulness. Next, they visit the retired caretaker of the Gilson farm, Farley, who informs them that Luna's great-grandfather was the originator of the Gilson farm, and it has been passed down through generations. Farley mentions that Will Nash is a fourth-generation farmer and an agronomist, which is a rare find. Farley speaks highly of Will, expressing his admiration for his helpfulness on the farm. Luna discovers that Will's family were also farm owners, who unfortunately lost their farms during the recession. Meanwhile, Andy explores the pumpkin farm and excitedly selects a pumpkin, eliciting laughter from Farley and Luna at the adorable sight. As autumn progresses, Pineview Harvest Festival takes place. Luna and Andy find themselves at a bench where a mother and her son are sitting. Luna offers her assistance when she notices that the boy has scraped his knee. Luna tends to his wound and shares advice with the mother. It becomes apparent that the Gilson name holds considerable fame in the town, even though Luna and her family are not frequently seen around. The woman, named Nicole, extends an invitation for Luna and Annie to visit the hospital. The boys quickly become friends, forging an instant connection. Harvest time arrives, and the scent of ripe fruits fills the air. It's a perfect occasion to whip up a delightful salad bowl and savor the bounties of the season. In the morning, Mrs. Gilson reaches out to Luna, who remarks that it's the first time she's wearing a bathrobe at 10 in the morning, something she rarely has the chance to do, due to her demanding schedule. Mrs. Gilson delivers disheartening news, the farm is going up for sale. Luna feels a wave of sadness as she learns that the farm is no longer profitable, and her family has lost interest in maintaining their long-standing heritage. The thought of giving up their ancestral farm weighs heavily on Luna's heart. Even during their vacation, Luna's dedication to her patients remains unwavering. Annie starts to feel bored in the seemingly unexciting place, so Luna makes an effort to infuse an adventurous spirit into their activities. They explore the farm together and marvel at the beauty surrounding them, with pear trees stretching as far as the eye can see. Luna continues to share stories from her own childhood, describing the fun and memorable experiences she had on the farm. Plucking a raw pear from a tree, Luna notes its unripe state. They leave the picturesque farm behind and head to Will, who is inspecting the pears. Andy goes off to get some snacks, giving Luna a chance to chat with Will. Luna asks Will about the location of the ripe trees, and they quickly establish a good rapport, despite their earlier interaction. Nicole pays Luna and Andy a visit, bringing food along. While the boys engage in play, Nicole inquires about Luna's impression of the farm. Later, the sheriff arrives at the Gilsons, informing them of an accident on one of the farms involving a hand injury. Being a doctor, Luna is asked for her assistance, and Will offers to help as well. Luna, Will, and the sheriff rush to the scene to provide aid. Meanwhile, the boys are left under Nicole's care. At the other farm, Luna tends to the injured farmer, noting a broken ankle but overall favorable condition. Using an improvised splint, Luna stabilizes the injury until an ambulance arrives to transport the farmer to the hospital. Luna ponders how the sheriff knew she was a doctor, leading to suspicions falling on Will. However, it turns out that Nicole was the one who revealed the information after checking on Bobby. Luna wonders why a small town like Pineview doesn't have its own doctors. The reason being is that it's a small town, and most doctors go to the city. Will drives Luna back to the farmhouse, playfully teasing her about her medical skills and her driving skills. Flustered, Luna apologizes once again, and mentions a leak in her sink, and Will offers his services as a handyman. Together with Andy, they fix the pipes, and Will teaches Andy the basics of plumbing. Luna offers to treat Will to a meal. Although it's still shining like it's three in the afternoon outside, Will bids goodnight. Seeking a stronger bond, Luna and Andy decide to create a cobbler using Nana's recipe, despite Luna's lack of culinary skills. Although she attempts to cook multiple times, her results are far from satisfactory. While Luna is 10 in the medical field, her cooking skills remain zero. Outside the window, Luna notices Will acting suspiciously as he locks the greenhouse, looking around as if afraid of being caught. The following morning, Luna attempts to open the locked greenhouse, but fails. As she climbs a ladder to pick a pear, she is startled by Will's sudden presence, nearly causing her to lose her balance. Will offers to show her how to properly pick fruit, standing close behind her as he patiently guides her through the process. After some instruction, Luna successfully picks a pear, though she jokes about simply slicing it up and adding it to a salad, unsure of what else to do with it. Both Luna and Will are aware of the impending sale of the farm. While Will keeps his plans for after the sale a secret, their bond continues to grow stronger. Luna inquires about the shed's secret, but Will merely states that it contains items to prevent accidents. Luna and Nicole go shopping together, helping with preparations for the festival and harvest. During the outing, Nicole introduces Luna to her husband, Tom. However, Luna realizes that something is causing Farley pain, as he is limping. She examines his swollen foot and provides medical advice as a doctor. Meanwhile, Will and Andy enjoy their time together, having fun on the tractor. Neither Luna nor Andy have ridden the vehicle, so Will gladly takes Andy for a ride. They seem to have a wonderful rapport, with Will assuming a fatherly role and teaching Andy interesting facts about the farm. Andy shares stories about his dad, although it remains unclear what happened to his real father. Will shows Andy a carving on a tree made by Philip, Andy's dad. 
The sight of his real father's work leaves Andy feeling sad, prompting him to hug Will. Luna enters another shed and discovers a box filled with mementos from her childhood. When Andy returns with an apple from Will, Luna wonders about its origin. She opens the box, revealing more fragments of her memories, including a ticket from her first harvest festival. Luna recalls playing baseball during a father-son game, defying societal expectations, despite being a girl. Mother and son engage in a game of catch. Outside, Bobby tries to convince Andy to stay longer, and although Andy seems tempted, Luna insists that they must return to their lives in the city. Later, realizing they are out of coffee, Luna volunteers to go into town to fetch some. In the process, she accidentally observes while dressed for success in a suit, shaking hands with people as if engaged in a business deal. Andy expresses his desire to stay, and is starting to develop a liking for the farm. Luna pays a visit to Will in the greenhouse, only to discover that the secret greenhouse is actually a laboratory where he conducts fruit testing. She receives confirmation that there are no apple trees on the farm, only pear trees. Eventually, Will arrives, and Luna seizes the opportunity to inquire about the apple trees. However, it becomes clear that there are no apple trees to be found. Luna receives a call from Marcy at the hospital, surprising her, as she realizes that she is not as worried about her job as she thought. Marcy reminds her of the importance of her role, and Luna glances at the friendship bracelet from her childhood. Spotting the ATV, Luna decides to have some fun and drives it around the farm, eliciting amusement from Will and Hank. At the end of her joyride, Will waits for her, and they exchange warm smiles. At the festival venue, Luna and Will share meaningful glances. Nicole mentions that many women seek attention from Will, but none have been lucky enough. Tom arrives with news of an opportunity for their farms to become renowned as a top source of pears. They reminisce about people they knew in the past who were associated with the farm. The evening brings a harvest moon, a special event that occurs once a year at the beginning of autumn. Will drives Luna and Andy back home, offering Luna the chance to see it. He even helps a sleeping Andy into the house. The sight of the full, yellow moon in the middle of the farm at night captivates them both. They gaze at its majestic beauty, appreciating the unique view that cannot be experienced in large cities like Seattle. Luna, however, remains persistent in her quest to uncover the truth about the apple trees. Luna initiates a conversation about relationships, but clarifies that she is not making an offer. She inquires why Will is still single, despite the attention from local ladies. Will explains that it's not part of his current plan, as he aims to own a farm. Luna persists in asking why he wouldn't want a relationship alongside his goals. She shares her own experience of initially planning to finish her residency before getting into a relationship, but meeting Philip changed her path. Although she is still a resident, Luna and Will find common ground in their thoughts. Luna expresses regret for being buried in work, and not being able to spend more time with Andy. She is grateful for this vacation and the reconnection with her son. However, she is unsure about what to do next, and rests her head on Will's shoulder. The following morning, Will visits Luna while she is watching the ducks. Marcy calls, but Luna declines the call, as she is not yet ready to return to her busy doctor's life. Finally, Will reveals the mystery of the non-existent apple pears. They are actually a different variety of pears that are redder, resembling apples, and sweeter, similar to apricots. Will has crossbred them with the intention of patenting the variety, and attracting investors. However, his plans are limited, as he doesn't have a farm. It is revealed that the farm has been sold and will be turned into a shopping mall, which is disheartening news. While eating at a cafe, Luna apologizes for missing out on important milestones in Andy's life. However, Andy enjoyed their time together regardless. Luna asks him what he wants, and Andy expresses his desire to stay, but he still has to study modular. Later, Ronnie, an old acquaintance, appears. Their family's farm is a competitor of the Gilson farm, and Ronnie boasts about the consistent success of their Williamsburg farm. Amidst ongoing uproar at the cafe, Will knocks on the door, as the noise is making it difficult for the pickers to gather the fruits. Luna informs him that they will be staying until the harvest festival. The next morning dawns with the picturesque view of the pear tree orchard, the sun shining brightly, but there is some bad news. Will informs Luna that a tree has fallen, blocking their way, due to the strong rain from the previous day. This obstacle hinders their journey to the festival, and the highway is closed. Will suggests that Luna call Farley for additional help. Luna promptly contacts Farley, who mobilizes a team to clear the path and salvage as many pears as possible. Even the kids pitch in, using improvised crates to collect the fallen pears. The word spreads, and they receive a lot of assistance. This demonstrates that Luna's ability to handle emergencies extends beyond the hospital setting. Will arrives with the tractor and all the pickers, along with the necessary crates. Luna seizes the opportunity to call her mom and proudly shows her parents the united efforts of the community, with Andy actively participating in the pear picking. Her parents are overjoyed, and Luna expresses her gratitude to them for suggesting this vacation. Although Andy is tired, he proclaims it to be the best day ever, and thoroughly enjoys helping with the harvest. Luna takes the opportunity to inquire about Will's business in Olympia, regarding his efforts to acquire land. 
However, Will's focus lies on the area where he can grow his new variety of pears. He hopes to win the hearts of investors, but seems hesitant to take any further action or make any commitments. Instead, he bids Luna farewell. While dining at a restaurant, Andy expresses his desire to stay in Pineview and suggests that Luna become a doctor in their community, emphasizing how she has been helping people throughout their stay. The harvest continues under favorable weather conditions, and as the days pass, Will and Luna grow closer, and their bond becomes warmer. The harvesting ends, and Luna offers Will a drink. They toast it with cider. They sit and talk. Luna reminisces again her childhood and her grandfather. Luna realizes that she never appreciated much of the farm life until now. She contemplates that she may have to change her and Andy's life by staying there a little longer. The festival arrives, and everyone is busy setting up the various fun stalls. The highlight of the event is the display of pears and pumpkins. Andy spots a pumpkin carving competition, and eagerly encourages his mother to participate, arguing that both carving and surgery involve using a knife. Though the comparison is somewhat tenuous, Andy's persuasive powers and the support of their friends push Dr. Gilson to join the contest and see if her carving skills surpass her cooking abilities. The contest begins, and Luna feels a bit lost amidst the skilled participants. Nevertheless, she starts carving the pumpkin, her hands shaky, as if treating it like a body part in the surgical room. The competition is fierce, with everyone displaying their expertise. As the carving session comes to an end, they turn their pumpkins around to reveal the finished jack-o'-lanterns. The sheriff, acting as the judge, announces Luna as the winner with her adorable cat-shaped jack-o'-lantern. Andy goes off to play, and a couple's dance commences. Will goes to check on the harvest, and as night falls, he returns. Luna contemplates staying for Halloween, and she boldly asks Will to dance, despite his lack of experience. To her delight, he agrees, and they sway and twirl together, enjoying the moment. They gaze at the bright, big moon, reveling in the joy of their spontaneous dance. Their connection deepens, and Will is on the verge of kissing Luna when she receives a call from her mother, who reveals that they are actually at the festival. Luna's parents have returned because they received an offer for the farm, indicating that it will be sold sooner or later. Luna, despite initially having no objections to the sale of the farm, suddenly feels concerned and expresses her reluctance to let it go. She explains that she and her family feel a strong sense of belonging there. During the baseball match, fathers and sons are paired up to play, and Luna joins as the only mother in the lineup. Luna has several missed attempts until she finally gets a hit, and Andy hits a home run. As they play together, Will, Andy, and Luna begin to resemble a family. Andy proudly declares that Luna is better than the dads, and Luna reveals her lucky charm, the friendship bracelet, which she passes on to Andy like an heirloom. Later, Tom announces the winner of the Harvest Festival, and in the pavilion, they anxiously await the results, especially Will, who hopes to win for his pear variety. And he does. His success at the festival will solidify his chances of attracting more investors. Meanwhile, Marcy calls Luna from the hospital and informs her that she is being promoted to a high position, making her the youngest person to hold such a role. Andy overhears this conversation and becomes saddened, fearing that they may have to return to the city. Will notices Andy's disappointment and hands him a gift, an old book that Will liked to read when he was a child. Andy confides in Will about his concerns regarding his mother's career prospects. Luna takes Andy inside the house to share some good news with her family. However, Will misinterprets the situation and assumes that the good news is related to Luna getting a new, more important job. As a result, his warm and sweet demeanor suddenly turns cold and distant, leaving Luna confused and wondering about his sudden change in behavior. Inside the house, Luna proceeds to announce her plans of getting an office in Pineview, revealing her intention to move her medical practice from Seattle to this charming town. Andy, who overheard his mother's earlier conversation, is perplexed by the conflicting information. Luna clarifies that she called Marcy back to turn down the job offer. Unbeknownst to Luna, Will has gone to meet with the investors to discuss the pear variety instead. In the midst of this confusion, Annie takes the initiative to talk to Will, possibly to share the positive news that Pineview will soon have a new doctor. Luna is practicing making a cobbler when she receives a message from Will, asking her to meet him at the greenhouse. Will appears once again from behind, and playfully makes Luna smell a rose. In this moment, Will reveals his grand plans. He has bought a farm, including a portion of their own farm. He tells Luna that the farm comes with someone special, and that is Luna herself. With Luna opening up a clinic, they will soon become neighbors. The culmination of their new lives together is sealed with a heartfelt kiss. 